Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ian Smith and welcome to episode 2 of this series. In the following two episodes, I'll be listing all the productivity and economic benefits that trees and vegetation on farms can provide. So wind reduction is the classic use of farm shelter belts, and for good reason. Using trees in this manner is a cost-effective way of reducing wind speed within a property. By what amount trees can reduce wind speed and over what distance can get a little technical, so I'll do a full episode on that later on. But a rule of thumb is a shelter belt will reduce wind speed for 20 times the height of the trees downwind. So a 10 metre tall tree will shelter a paddock 200 metres downwind. Reducing wind speed is important for both crops and livestock. For crops, lower wind speeds reduce damage to plant, fruit and blossoms. Lower wind speeds also make it easier for pollinators and other beneficial insects to fly between plants. In fact, one study showed a 20 to 30% higher yield in sheltered orchards due to increased pollination rates. Sheltered paddocks are also important to livestock. Trees provide shade in summer and reduce wind chill in winter. This isn't just beneficial for animal welfare, as sheltered livestock are also more productive. In cold conditions, sheltered cattle and sheep have a higher growth rate, ovulation rate, wool growth rate, and lower abortion and lamb mortality. Conversely, in hot conditions, sheltered livestock have higher milk and milk fat yield, increased growth rate, lower rates of mastitis, and improved conception rates. A paddock with lower wind speeds is also more efficient in agrochemical application, as lower wind speeds result in less chemical drift, meaning more on your target plants and less in the local watercourse. Farms that are sheltered by trees suffer less erosion than exposed sites. This is important as topsoil contains the vast majority of nutrients within a soil profile. A paddock sheltered by trees will be subjected to less wind-driven soil erosion due to lower wind speeds. Trees and vegetation also reduce water, or alluvial, erosion through two methods, by intercepting water flowing downhill and slowing the water speed, and trapping soil that has been picked up. Trees and ground cover plants also protect soil from the impact of raindrops, which can increase the rate of erosion. Trees also provide erosion protection by what they drop. Leaf litter and other fine litter dropped by trees protect the soil from events such as heavy raindrops and reduce the likelihood of gully erosion by slowing down water speeds. Farmland by design typically contains large areas of monocultures, such as rows of crops or pasture grasses. Although this makes management easier, it greatly reduces biodiversity. This is a problem because areas of low biodiversity favour herbivorous insects which damage crops. By introducing farm trees and other non-crop vegetation, you provide a source of food and habitat for beneficial insects that will eat and control these herbivorous insects. These resources also act as habitat for native pollinators which can increase productivity. Non-crop vegetation can also be used to break up paddocks and crops. This essentially makes crops a smaller target to passing pest species by making them harder for insects to detect. Non-crop vegetation throughout a farm also has the benefit of allowing beneficial insects to disperse throughout a crop faster, allowing a faster recolonization after pesticide use. Dense vegetation can in some instances even prevent the arrival of pest species, with many species preferring to go around a row of trees rather than over it. This can be handy between applications of insecticide as it will slow down recolonization from outside or neighbouring crops. Farm trees are not limited to enhancing beneficial insects, however, with more visible species, such as insect-eating birds and micropats, also benefiting. Insectivorous species such as these are able to disperse large distances throughout a property, eating large amounts of pest insects, including caterpillars, moths and even mosquitoes. These species utilise the resources provided by trees, such as hollows, nectar, nesting sites, and also use them as a stopover point when travelling across landscapes. Even a few scattered farm trees can increase the ability of insect-eating birds to cross a cleared landscape. Thank you for listening. Next episode I'll discuss part 2 of Benefits of Farm Trees. If you wish to support the series, make sure you like this video and subscribe. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below or shoot me an email at profitable.habitat at gmail.com, where I'm also available for consults. Until next episode, keep planning.